What's up everyone? Welcome to 2023 and welcome to my new studio. Now if you follow Aptera at all, you've probably already seen the Delta design, which is the final pre-production design. But what I wanted to do was just go through that video bit by bit and just talk about some of the things that they've changed and updated. So let's jump right in. Now the carbon fiber composite structure is composed of five inner pieces seen in black and then three outer pieces seen in white. Um, this is a few more than the earlier designs showed. They did switch to this carbon fiber composite due to the ease of manufacturing. Obviously they have got a lot of vehicles to build so they need to make this as easy and affordable as possible. This is all locked together and placed on what looks to be a cast aluminum subframe. If you look closely at the front, you can see where the crumple zone of the front bumper will be. The Alafe in-wheel motors are then mounted onto the exposed axles, followed by the wheels and tires. The wheel covers slip down over them and bolt on. Changing tires and accessing these motors will be super easy. The exterior of the nose is actually made up of several different pieces now, rather than one large nose cone. The underbody, though, is one large separate piece of black plastic, which will make accessing the battery pack super easy. The rear wheel skirt is three pieces now, plus a tail fin cover. Now looking at the side, the belly cover streamlines the look in a really nice way, and also answers my questions about wrapping the underside. Now you could easily leave the black underside for a two-tone look, or wrap in multiple pieces. This will make wrapping it a lot easier. Having these seams, it gives a place for you to cut the vinyl and have separate pieces. Now I think I could do this one myself, um, but I may ask Brian from i1 Tesla to help me out if he's interested. Brian? Also, I know what I'm gonna do with mine, but that's a surprise. The wheel covers look amazing now, much more refined. The suspension arms have nice aero covers that really make this look like a final product. My only concern with this being a final design is the exposed wiring going into the motors. Maybe they're still going to add rubber gaskets here to cover this area? Not sure. Aptera, you want to answer this? Ultrasonic sensors are visible on the front wheel skirts. The mandated center headlight looks great with the daytime running lights completing the front end with a nice animation when they turn on. The rear tail light design is nicely refined to move them outward. There is now only one rear camera instead of the two that Gamma had at Fully Charged Live. On the back of the rear tail fin, there is now a vertical red reflector. The housing for the license plate light looks a little slimmer, but still kind of a bulbous look. The license plate light is a single LED for maximum efficiency. Aptera has made the rear hatch extend all the way to the tail, rather than having a lip or a ledge. This too allows more solar cells. There are now 93 solar cells on the rear hatch and 50 on the roof, if I'm counting these correctly. Now this great design on the rear of the vehicle on either side of the license plate may just be for looks, but maybe it's also part of the skin cooling system? I guess we'll see. Moving to the inside, you can see the rear hatch area looks deeper and more finished. There are cargo hooks on either side of the floor of the hatch, both front and back. The yoke has been tweaked slightly at the top thumb area, as well as having that tag removed that looked like a tooth. Thank you for removing that. The plus and minus on the pedals have been kept. The doors look more like standard car doors now. Two-tone with an armrest and window buttons. Thank you for window buttons. Um, I was concerned about having to use the screen to open windows. I can't help but wonder how useful these required side mirrors are. We all know that they didn't even want them, but slow US regulation changes means they have to be there by law. We'll be using the two large screens behind the yoke anyway, and maybe they're removable and we can just take them off later, but the camera is built into the mirror housing, so we'll have to wait and see what happens with that. The rear view mirror screen up top looks nice and large, and it looks like it's moved up to the ceiling level rather than hanging down some. The angled black sun visors are a nice touch. The seats have been refined even more and look comfortable and high quality. 
The yoke is even more simplified. The scroll wheels like a Model 3 are gone and replaced with an up-down button on the left and a horn button on the right. Super simple. The gear shifter is still gone. Below the screen though is a row of physical gear selection buttons now. There is a windshield wiper stock on the left. Now the UI on the screen is not complete. This is just placeholder. Chris already said that they wanted to finalize production hardware design before they work on finalizing the UI. So now that the hardware is done being designed, they'll be moving into more of the software side. Now look closely and you'll see the dashboard has a nice metal strip that adds some depth to the design. The dashboard is now covered in 20 solar cells. This brings the grand total of solar cells to 193. This is a 16% increase over the alpha. Now does this mean that it will have more solar range or did they need a few more cells to be able to reach that 40 miles per day? Or maybe they wanted that 40 to be more realistic in more conditions rather than just San Diego. Now the center console has been completely redesigned again. Gone is the pineapple leather, which has been replaced by fabric. It looks really nice. There's a nice big storage space on the underside of the armrest. Also gone are the strange bungee cord cup holders, replaced with two real cup holders that are made to be floating over that surface underneath. I think this looks really cool and also should be easy to clean and just wipe underneath when there aren't any cups in it. There's a wireless charging pad that sits just above the cup holders, much like in a Tesla. So overall, I'm super hyped, super excited that the final design is here. Production is supposed to start this year, which is really cool to say for both this and the Cybertruck. So later this year, maybe summer, we will get the first deliveries happening. Um, don't know when I'll get mine, but hopefully sooner than later. Now, I still want to know about the wires that are exposed by the front wheels. Um, that would be a good thing for Aptera to address if they are going to cover those or not. So if anyone at Aptera is watching, let us know in the comments or in your own video. Um, but I know some other people have that concern as well. Um, when that first teaser was released and it showed the front end of the Delta, people were asking about that being exposed. My only other concern in the entire design is the side mirrors, but like I said, you're going to be looking at the screens anyway. The mirrors are just there for decoration because they have to be. Whether you can see very well in them or not, doesn't matter. You've got the screens. So anyway, what do you think? What are your thoughts on this final design? Are you more excited, less excited? Um, have you already pre-ordered one? If not, use my referral link below. There's a long line and it's only going to get longer. As soon as people start seeing these on the road, Aptera has no idea what's coming. <laughs> they better get some more factories up and running. But anyway, thanks a lot for watching and let me know in the comments if I missed anything. All right, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.